morning, fellas. It is our first 50 degree day that we've had in a week. Now, first thing you might be thinking to yourself is, Squid, it doesn't look like winter outside. I live in Colorado. It is freezing cold. Right now, it's actually not too bad. It's like some 40 or 50 degrees, sunny. Sun does make a big difference, but I figured it would be a great opportunity to talk about riding in the winter. And my first thing I would say to that is uh, don't. I'm just kidding. Um, first thing I would say is, shit, what would I say? Uh, yeah, don't buy a car. I don't own a car right now, so this is my primary mode of transportation to and from work and class. And that low key sucks. There's a lot of things that kind of change when the weather gets colder, when you start riding, that it, it, it's just not present when you're riding in warm weather. Things like tire pressure, tire warmth, uh, how warm you are, you know, how warm your bike is, like these all come into play a lot more and it's stuff that I've been dealing with lately. I figured we could chat about, I totally could have made that, it's kind of lame. Um, one thing you'll notice is my bike is at 156 right now, um, which means I let it warm up a good bit before I even left. I just left like 30 seconds ago. So I think letting your bike warm up I thought it certainly uh, does make a big difference. Winter's kind of a bitch, man. Um, there's guys that ride in the snow and whatnot. I personally don't. Um, I don't ride when, when the roads are super wet and slushy and whatnot. We get a lot of that here. And if it's below, usually my cutoff is between 30 and 40. I'm not riding. I don't really care how sunny it is outside. I'm just not gonna do it. First thing I'm really concerned about is clothing. Outside of my bike, when it comes to actually me is clothing. Right now I'm wearing two layers of pants. I'm wearing a t-shirt and a hoodie over it. Normally, if it's a lot colder, hello. Normally, if it's a lot colder, I'm wearing two pairs of pants, two pairs of socks, three or four layers on top. So I would highly recommend getting yourself a good soft shell jacket. That is kind of the base of what I wear when it's really cold out. I'm wearing a t-shirt and then a hoodie over that. And then I'm wearing a soft shell jacket. On top of that, I might throw on another hoodie, but a good soft shell jacket will act as a windbreaker and keep the core of your body really warm. So that's really important to me. Sometimes I'll even throw on two. If I have two clean ones laying around and I can like swing it and it's super cold, I will throw on two just to really block as much wind as possible and keep you warm. Um, everyone's gonna say like windbreakers, windbreakers are great if you have a good one, but if you don't, a soft shell jacket works almost the same and will be a little bit warmer on the inside I've noticed. Because, you know, a windbreaker, I mean, a good windbreaker will have clothing, clothing, cloth, um, and fur on the inside, but you don't always get that. So, really, for me, soft shell jacket with a hoodie combo. Oh, hello, Cybertruck. Really makes a big difference. Um, gloves. I don't own heated gloves. I've never owned them. I've never had heated grips. Uh, I probably should, but really it's, it's your hands. Your hands are just gonna get cold, man. Like there's, there's nothing else to it. Um, it's kind of hard to say, like a lot of guys, especially the Chicago boys are gonna say, get uh, some sort of vinyl glove or rubber glove and you wear that under your motorcycle gloves in my experience they honestly like don't really work that well but that could just be my experience so 
I tend to kind of skip that unless it's really bad out then it'll just help a little bit but the, the thinking behind that is it'll act as kind of a windbreaker for your hands now of course like I'm wearing fucking motocross gloves I always wear motocross gloves they're not the safest for protection they are not the warmest uh, but you can get some motocross gloves that are designed to be warm and keep the moisture out of your hands. Uh, I think I do have like an old pair of 100% winter riding gloves and those honestly, there was a noticeable difference for sure. So I would highly recommend those. I'm sure they make better versions of them now. Oh, wow. I'm sure they do make better versions of them now. I'm just not really, I don't know, super concerned with it. But yeah, I mean, your hands are gonna get cold, man. And as far as heated grips, I can't really comment on them. I don't, I've never had them. My next thing would honestly just be staying healthy. Like, and by healthy, I mean warm. Cause, what are we doing? Oh, someone missed the exit. Um, for me, like, before I go ride, depending on what time it is, like, I'm I'm drinking a warm cup of coffee before I get on that bike. I'm trying to keep my hands as warm as possible. I'm trying to... What the fuck? Uh, I'm trying to help keep my body warm. Like... If you have some... Some warm food... Or you just got out of the gym or something like that and you're going to ride you're gonna be noticeably warmer so that does play a role but it's kind of a small role really like this all of this kind of comes down to gear as far as keeping yourself warm while you're riding another big thing that made a difference for me when I figured out how to do it was just like you got to just like open up into the wind like you have to sit there and, and take that cold because if you're hunched up and you're gripping your your bike so hard it ends up being kind of a, a safety thing where you can't react as fast you know I'd rather sit there and be cold and be able to move out of the way if I need to than like I don't know just be a little bit warmer or be perceived to be a little bit warmer I'm sitting there shivering and hit the back of some truck because I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to how cold I was. So you gotta pay attention to the road. Like all the same things still apply. And on top of that, like your tires are gonna be super cold, dude. If I'm gonna start a ride in the cold, I kind of like going in a straight line for as long as possible. Um, Cause it'll just warm up your tires. You know, if you're going 50 or whatever in a straight line, you don't have to worry about hitting corners and slipping out or anything because your tires are going to be just a little bit more heated up you know once that sun goes down and you're riding like dude your your tires are glass <laughs> so that's like that's a big thing too dude when that when the sun goes down like you don't have any warmth from just the the light the things do drop considerably colder your brakes aren't gonna work as well in my experience uh, and you have to be more gentle on them because we've already established your tires are just not going to stick as well so you have to be more gentle on your brakes which means you got to have a little bit more of a space cushion you got to take things a little bit slower i mean it's kind of just common sense stuff when it actually comes to riding but those are just some of the things that i do uh as far as your bike goes like i said like i like to warm up my bike a little bit longer than i normally would you know i'm not just i'm not just warming it up to like 110 degrees you know i'll warm it up to 130 150 160 operating like full operating temp and then i'll start riding it 
And I think for me, maybe that's just kind of like peace of mind. Uh, when I pull up the stoplights, a lot of guys forget this for some reason, but like you're riding a machine that is operating at like between 150 and 200 degrees, you know, use it. Like put your hand on the case and warm up your hands for a minute. If you don't have heated grips, just do that. And it's not gonna like solve all your problems, but it'll help for sure. <laughs> I don't know why more people don't do that, but that does help a lot. Now, I mean, if you're riding in like, if you have an ADV bike uh, yeah, or a dirt bike or something like that, and you're riding in full like snow, snow, and you got spikes on your tires or something, like go for it, dude. Um, I just don't, I don't, I don't want to slip and fall because of some, something stupid like that. <laughs> because uh, I don't have ice spikes on my bike. I don't think a whole lot of guys do. But if you still want to ride during the winter, you know, you can. You just, you got to stay warm, man. I don't know. I think a lot of this stuff is kind of common sense. But the snow has fallen here. Uh, I live in Colorado. So a big chunk of the year, it is just cold and miserable. So it's not even like super snowy a lot of the time, at least the part of Colorado that I live in. I don't live in the mountains. So a lot of time the snow isn't that bad. It's just that it is freezing temperatures. Like I said, if it's if it's below 30, like unless you have to ride for whatever reason, like just don't, it's not worth it. I remember when I was new to riding bikes, I did. I would want to ride my bike like, you know, year round. And I got myself into some stupid situations because I would try to ride when it was like 20 degrees and, and snowing outside or raining. And it's just stupid. It's just a stupid idea. Don't do it. This is a pretty quick one. I don't really think it's, it's all that complicated, but I haven't seen a whole lot of people make a video about it. So I figured I would given the season that I'm going into. But whatever you do, just, you know, be safe and don't ride like a dumbass. Uh, use your head, you know, and stay warm. But I'll probably cut it there. Going to go have a good day at the lot with the fellas. And I will see you guys later. Peace.